Good afternoon uh, and welcome to another episode of Condo Insider on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura and I'm your host today. And um, we're going to be talking about, you know, I, uh, I've had, uh, this is my second show about resources uh, for condominium owners and uh, people who uh, work and uh, serve condominiums, work in condominiums and serve, uh, serve them. Anyway, uh, there's an agency, a government agency in Hawaii called the Department of Con uh, uh, Commerce and Consumer Affairs. And there's a division in that the department called the Real Estate Branch. And by statute, and, and I'm talking about the a, uh, HR, Hawaii Revised Statute 514B, which is the, uh, uh, the condominium, uh, Hawaii condominium statute that creates condominiums and uh, basically regulates them. The, the uh, real estate branch of the DCCA is the regulatory agency that does that has oversight over condominiums in the state of Hawaii. So uh, those of you who aren't familiar with the DCCA real estate branch, uh, you need to um, uh, you know, become familiar with them mainly because they do have oversight. And if you have a question, you can call them uh, and, uh, and uh, they have uh, people called condominium specialists and, and they will you know, answer the phone and, um, and, uh, and uh, answer questions that you may have about uh, condominium issues. And, um, and they have a website and uh, we should be, it, it should be uh, scrolling there it is, uh, www.hawaii.gov slash HIREC. That's Hawaii Real Estate Commission. And uh, that's their website. And uh, if you go to that website and you'll, you'll see, I mean, and they re re regulate everything having to do with real estate in Hawaii. So you have to look for condominiums. And, and they, have, uh, they have like a, a menu on the right-hand side of the, of the website and just look for condominiums. And, and it's a terrific resource uh, for people who have issues, questions about uh, condominium, because this is, the, this is the agency that basically uh, has oversight over condominiums so that if you call in and uh, talk to somebody there, I mean, they have to make a report to the legislature every year. So if there's an issue, like um, I know one issue that uh, they get a lot of uh, comments on is they get comments from owners uh, complaining about their boards of directors, saying that the boards, you know, uh, are mean, they, you know, or they're not fair, and uh, you know, somehow, you know, the, the legislature should uh, pass laws that will allow uh, the boards to change. Uh, unfortunately, the legislature uh, will not do things like that because the statute, the, the law uh, has embedded in it, this policy about self-governance. Self-governance means that if you live in a condominium and you're unhappy with your board, guess what? You have to ban, you have to talk to your neighbors and the other owners in the association and you have to remove those directors that you don't like. And that's what self-governance is all about. It means that if you don't like your government then you have to unelect them. Just like you do you know, with the, the governor and your state representatives and the people you send to Congress. If you don't like them, then you gotta vote, you gotta vote them out of office and put somebody in that is gonna uh, help you. And that's the same thing uh, with condominiums. And so you, know, you, 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 you should be, you know, become very familiar uh, with the, um, a real estate commission. But you know, if you go into the website and, uh, and they have uh, all these different topics uh, that, uh, that you, know, you may, you may want to do. I mean, you, uh, let's say you have a complaint. And, and so the, the question would be, where do I go if I, wanna, if, I, if I have a complaint about my board of directors? What happens if my, my board is not enforcing the rules? fairly, uh, they, or they're picking on me or they're harassing me, what do I do? And then so, and, and or, you know, if, if you, uh, I wanna put a, I wanna put improvements in my unit. 
how do I know what to do? I mean, what improvements do I have to get board approval for? And those kinds of questions you can call and the uh, answer, I mean, the, the service is free. They're not gonna charge you. And um, if, if you do have a complaint, they will tell you there is a government agency that's related to, that's in the same uh, department, I guess, as the DCCA real estate branch. And it's called RICO, government, uh, uh, it's, it's the uh, regulatory uh, agency uh, complaint office. And so, so any industry like condominiums that are regulated by the state of Hawaii, uh, can you can file a complaint against them uh, by going to this state agency. The complaint forms uh, and the pr procedures are online and it's free. And the, the complaint form is something that you can download and, and file with the state of Hawaii and they will investigate and, and get back to you. But you know, one of the things about the real estate branch is they have all of these, uh, maybe, I, I guess you would call them essays. I mean, if you want to know about budget and reserves, you can go and, and click on that and find out all the, everything about budget and reserves. If you want, if you have a dispute, you might have a dispute with your board. And it's like, well, what do I do? What can I do? Are there any remedies available to me? And under the statute, you can either do mediation or arbitration. And some mediation is subsidized by the state of Hawaii. Uh, and, and so you can find out which types of uh, mediation and arbitration are subsidized. And you can go on the website and find out exactly you know, how uh, that's implemented. And you might figure out, you might say, well, geez, you know, how, where's this money coming from uh, that they can subsidize dispute resolution? In other words, I mean, you, you want to do, me do a mediation? And the mediators in town, some of them are, you know, retired judges. I mean, and the mediators get paid and uh, their hourly rate is something around $400. And so the, some types of mediation are subsidized by the state of Hawaii. You can go to the uh, real estate branch and go into their website and, and find, get that information. Uh, how, and in fact, it tells you how to do the mediation, who you call and, and how much is gonna be subsidized. I think it's eight hours, eight hours worth of mediation services. And if, if the mediator feels that, you know, that they can resolve it, they can ask the, the state for more time and the state will subsidize it. And you're, th you're thinking to yourself, well, geez, that's a lot of money. Where are they getting it from? They're, it's coming from you. If you live in a condominium, you, uh, your condominium has to pay to, this, uh, to the state of Hawaii, ECCA, uh, every two years. It's a biennial charge. And it started off uh, about 30 years ago. It started off a dollar and a quarter per unit every two years. As of last year, it's almost $10. So if you have a 300 unit building, uh, your, the, the building actually gets a bill from the state of Hawaii for $3,000 because it's $10 per unit, 300 units, $3,000, and they actually get a bill. And the association has to write a check and that goes to the DCCA and it goes to pay for uh, you know, these services uh, that are offered because the policy, the, the legislators uh, determined a long time ago that the uh, that one of the, the things that they they want to see subsidized is dispute resolution because when people have disputes and you live in a condominium and those of you who live in a condominium will know this you have a fight with your neighbor you don't want to go to court I mean courts you know you, even if you do it in small claims court and you don't get an attorney it's still time out of your life and it's stressful and you got to go before a judge. And uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, the mediation is usually, you know, before a professional mediator and most of them, and many of them are retired judges. And, um, but, you know, it's not free. It's not free. And, and, and now with COVID, I mean, they're doing the mediations by Zoom. 
you know, so that means you can sit in your home and participate by computer or, you know, by telephone. But, you know, um, the, uh, the uh, legislators determined that one of the things that um, uh, should be subsidized is dispute resolution. That's why the mediations are paid for. They don't want you to go to court. They don't want you to take your disputes to the courtroom. They rather have you, the, you know, ha have it resolved by a mediator and the state will subsidize. Another uh, uh, thing that, an another uh, uh, service that these fees that you are charged pay for is education. And that's, you know, one of the, one of the, the, the benefits uh, that uh, you as a consumer uh, are, you know, can get when you go onto the website, because like I said, there are all of these reports, these essays that tell you on, on you know, how, you know, if you want to do repairs, how do you go about doing that? Which ones do you have to get uh, your uh, board to approve? And, you know, what's the process? And, you know, how, you know, how do I remove, if I don't like my board, how do I get rid of them? How do I remove my uh, board of directors? Or, you know, uh, if I want to sit on, if I want to run for the board, how do I run for the board? You know, all of these, they, they have little essays that tell you how to. And uh, what we're going to be talking, and, and, and uh, like I said, they have this uh, on dispute resolution. They have sections regarding mediation, arbitration, and how you can take advantage of, of those programs. And, um, uh, but right now, the, the DCCA real estate branch has come out with these new, uh, this new program, and it's called uh, Hawaii Condo Living Guide, a video series. And what, what they've done is they've made these uh, videos, there's 15 of them to start with, and they're three to five minutes and let me just tell you what they um, what the topics are, and uh, they're professionally produced uh, videos, and they cover a number of uh, common uh, condominium issues. And the first one would be purchasing a condominium, new condominium owner, owners' rights and responsibilities, board of directors common governance issues, dispute resolution, governing documents, what's a governing document, meetings, association meetings, what's the difference between an association meeting and a board of directors meeting? And how can you participate? Association records. In other words, if, if you're an owner, you're entitled to get records. And if you want border, if you want minutes, uh, or the declaration or the bylaws, a lot of associations, they belong, uh, they're managed by professional property management companies. And a lot of these companies create websites for associations. And on the website will be posted your governing documents, your declaration, your bylaws, your house rules. And if you have, um, uh, standards for altering your, if you have building standards or carpet standards. In other words, you know, there, there are rules about, you know, let's say carpet, you know, uh, you know what uh, uh, quality did, does it have to be? Maybe there are certain times that you can have your installer come in and, uh, and so it's the access to the building. Um, but anyway, all of those, all of those rules, uh, uh, would be included there, and um, and the, the 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 issue on association records is it will tell you which records you can get, which records you can get for free, which records you can get to uh, you know uh, if you want copies of them, uh, you know what what what's it going to cost you per page, and some some records you are allowed to uh, review them. You can go down to your site manager's office or your resident manager's office like board minutes. And with board minutes, a lot of them are putting them on the website. You know, so, so if you have a website, it might be there. Uh, but you know, these records are owner's records that you are entitled to see. 
and uh, and the law says that you can see them. Uh, you do need to uh, pay a reasonable charge if you want your own copies of them. You have to pay the copying charges. Uh, and if you don't want to pay the copying charges, you, you can go down to the uh, property manager's office and, and read them there and order copies if you decide you, you want them later. Another uh, video is on budget and reserves funding, and that's very complicated. Uh, it, it tells you, you know, it, it, this tells you how associations determine, uh, you know, what your maintenance fees are going to be on an annual basis. And, you know, the, the, your maintenance fee um, calculation determination is based on what you spent last year and how much is it, you know, how much are those costs going to increase? Maybe we all know with the border water supply, they said for the next 20 years, this was about five or six years ago, they said for the next 20 years, it's going to go up 10% per annum because we got to replace all the pipes in Oahu. Okay, so you know that. But anyway, um, you know, every budget season and those who sit on the board know this, the property managers will give you a spreadsheet and they'll say, oh, okay, your uh, employment costs are going up this much. And your insurance is going up 12% because we had the condo collapse in Florida and we have all the wildfires, you know, burning in California. And so, you know, the insurance companies, you know, have to pay out a lot of money. And therefore that affects us in Hawaii because we are somehow in the same risk pool as, I mean, the people in Florida and the people who are involved with wild, wildfires in California and, <clears throat> and all the other things that are, are happening that insurance companies have to pay for. And, and, you know, if, and so if you see things that happen like the condo collapse and you know that that's gonna cost some insurance company a pretty penny, that we're, it's gonna come and affect us because we're in the same insurance pool through the reinsurance. And therefore, our insurance is, is going to go up because of that incident. Let me see another um, uh, another um, video is on maintenance fee and special assessments. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that this video will tell you how the boards have to deal with certain factors to um, uh, figure out what your maintenance fees. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the second page of a flyer regarding this program. And there are two links uh, on this page. This is where you would go to see these videos. And what I suggest you do is maybe just, you know, go into your browser and type in real estate branch. And then once you get to the real estate branch, go to the condo living guide. That's what these new three, three to five minute videos are. And, but the first, uh, link is https colon backslash backslash cca.hawaii.gov slash reb slash hawaii colon condo hyphen living guide backslash. These, if you, if you go to the website, the website will have the links. Uh, the, and that's the real estate branch of the DCCA. You go to their website or you go to YouTube and, you, and what you're looking for is the condo living guide. And oh, there, there's four more, four more um, videos. There's one on insurance. Uh, and you know, there's a mass, for those of you, you know, who live in condos, you know that the association has a master policy. Okay, and, and, and because the buildings are getting older, the, the um, deductibles have gone up. So that's why a lot of uh, buildings require all unit owners to have their own homeowners policy, which is an HO6 policy. So this insurance video will, will, will probably focus on the master policy. This is the one that covers the building that is paid for by your maintenance fees. And uh, the next video would be on leaks and water damage. Now, and, and with bu building owners, I mean, with uh, older buildings, 
when you have your pipes, you know, and, and we all know now, we all, we all unfortunately know that, you know, plumbing does not, and we, we used to think that plumbing would last us 75 years. Uh, now we know that that's not true. So uh, associations have to budget to uh, replace their piping, which is a huge uh, amount. That's why, you know, we, we have to include it now in our budgets so that we can sock away money every year for a 20 year period. So that we, by, by the end of the 20 year period, we will have enough money without doing a special assessment. Uh, and that's the, whole, that's the whole purpose behind budget, doing the budget and setting up reserves is that you have to, and you, you, have, you hire somebody uh, and I guess, I don't know what the technical term is. We all call them reserve specialists. And what they do is, you know, they, they, they come to your building and they look at your building and they look at all your components. So what, what is it that, and they look at your budget. What, what is it that you do on a regular basis? You have to paint the building, okay? So before you paint the building, you have to do all your spa repairs, uh, you know, because you can't paint the building. The building is cracking. You've got to fix the cracks first. Then you do your building. And then things like <clears throat> you have to replace the carpeting. In the building, you have to paint the interior. Uh, you have to uh, replace your pool furniture. You have to replace your heat pumps, and so the, and every building is different. So you have you know the reserve specialist has a list, and it will they they will go around and and check off their list every component in your building and how often you have to do it. You, you, and and then <clears throat> so they will determine a useful life for each, each item. And so let's say your carpeting lasts 10 years. So they will, uh, and so, so there's a way that, you know, they, they can uh, calculate how much money you have to sock away today so that you will have enough money 10 years from now to replace that carpet without doing a special assessment. And that's the whole thing with the budget and reserves. They do that with every component and so it's a long report because you know you have to you know fix your pipes. You have you have um, your 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 garage, uh, you know, and the garage has got to be painted. It's, uh, there's got to be small repairs. There's got to be plumbing repairs. There's got to be electrical repairs. And you might have <clears throat> some automatic gates to let you into the garage. And those components all have to be uh, you know put into the uh, report. And um, in, inside your building, you have to, uh, you have the uh, trash chute that you, you know, that, that goes through the entire building. And that has to be maintained and it has to be repaired. And, uh, you know, you might have, you know, certain plumbing fixtures. Now we have to put in pipes, replacement of pipes uh, to, to, to uh, be included in that renovation of your elevators, upgrading your fire alarm systems, all of this stuff is, is put into this report and, and a, a useful life a, and is determined for each component. And then they calculate how much money you have to sock away today to have that money by the time you have to replace it. And theoretically, if you do it correctly, that means you never have to do a special assessment, right? Because that means that you're socking away money every month so that when something has to be done, you have money in your reserves, in your reserve account to pay for those reserves. I mean, to pay for that repair or that replacement. And the reason why this is important is many, many years ago, I'd say back in the early 90s, uh, the legislators were getting complaints. Somebody would buy into a condo. And the next year, they would get a special assessment for $10,000 for a new roof. And it's like, wait a minute, I just moved in. I just bought this unit. How come I got to pay $10,000? What happened to the people who were here 20 years ago? How come they didn't sock away money every month that I, here I am, a brand new owner, and you're special assessing me $10,000? for a brand new roof, that's not fair. And so that's what the whole theory behind budget and reserves is, is that all the owners from, you know, you know, 
you're, 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 you're paying for what is called deferred maintenance. Maintenance that may not happen for a couple of years down the road. And you might not even be living there if you sell your unit, right? But, you know, it's only fair that, you know, you, since you live there, that you contribute something to this reserve account so that when the repair has to be done, that the current, the, uh, the owners at that time don't have to pay a special assessment to make sure. And, and usually the, you know, the amount is, is, is not small, it's usually a big amount. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's not fair for them to have to, you know, pay that uh, cost all together. And, uh, oh, there's two more, there's two more. Agents, agents of the association, and, and uh, this one is about people who service the, uh, 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 the uh, association. So that would be your site managers, your property managers, and uh, exactly what their roles are. And the last one on here is condominium resources. And condominium resources is, is something um, that is really, we're finding out it's really important because you as a condominium owner, uh, if you have an issue, it's what we're hearing is well, you don't know where to go. You don't know where to go to find a solution. And so I'm suggesting that this website is one of your resources and you should go there first. Uh, it's free. You can get to it from any device. And uh, like I said, it's, 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 it's a, a, you know, a very uh, uh, convenient website because it has all of these informational uh, essays that talk to you or that teach you about uh, condominium living and different components that affect your life as a condominium owner. And now you've got these educational vi uh, videos under the uh, condominium living guide a video series. So you can also get access to these videos and they're three to five minutes. And you know, who doesn't have time to, uh, to view a three to five minute video? Uh, and and uh, so, you know, I, I encourage you to take advantage of this website. Uh, it is a resource, it's free. That's the best thing about it, it's free. And it's available uh, from any device. And uh, so, uh, and we'll have more programs on other resources, but the State of Hawaii uh, website and educational videos is, is a terrific resource. And it's something that you're paying for. Like I said, you, you know, you as a condominium owner are special, you know, you, you get assessed every two years. You may, and, and it's paid through your maintenance fees. I mean, they don't, you never see the bill, but take my word for it. I know because uh, I'm an association president. I've signed the checks to the state of Hawaii uh, for the invoice that gets sent to my building. And um, so, so you are paying for it. You should take advantage of it. And if you, you know, if there's something there that uh, that just doesn't seem to address what you know your concern is, call the DCCA, real estate branch, and they will have a condominium specialist that you can talk to, and 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 he or she will direct you to you know some place where you know you, you can find your answer. And so I hope I've given you some information, some good information that's useful. And you know, I think we're going to be doing maybe two or three more shows about condominium resources, so that you know you will have a place to go to uh, if you have a question or concern, so that you can get the information uh, that you need to deal with those concerns. And I appreciate you, you know, watching our show. And please tune in uh, next week, and uh, it will be um, Raylene Tenno. Uh, who will be uh, doing the show. And I think, I think I'm gonna be her guest. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be her guest because we're gonna be talking about the fire safety, uh, fire safety ordinance. Uh, Council member Fukunaga uh, is arranging for a panel discussion between a bunch of condo people. And there's a, there's a bunch that we've been talking to over the last couple of weeks. And we're gonna be meeting with the fire department. Uh, and trying to see if uh, you know they can 
address the concerns from uh, condominium owners who have completed their life safety evaluations and just found out how, much, how expensive it's gonna be for them to comply with this ordinance. And they have a lot of concerns. And so we'll be talking to the fire department and Raylene's show next week uh, will probably be talking about what happened at that meeting. So please tune in and thank you very much for joining us for uh, this episode of Condo Insider. Mahalo and goodbye. Thank you.